13 chemists, welcome to TP's Chemistry Cuts. In this clip, I carry out a series of calculations on a weak acid strong base titration curve. Right then. Okay, so today we will look at a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. And I have to admit that of the two possible permutations, this is actually the harder one, mainly because you're forming the conjugate base at the equivalence point, and uh, you've got to calculate the pH of the conjugate base, which involves extra steps. But it should be fairly straightforward when we pull everything together. When you're looking at a titration curve, what the most important thing to do is at each step along the titration curve, consider what species you've got in solution. Remember we did the section where we were identifying species in solution? Well, this is where it comes in. So what I'll do is I'll break down each section of this into the species and we'll think about what's actually happening. Okay? Now, we're going to use just a generalised acid HA, which just loses H plus when it acts as the acid, and it's forming its conjugate base in the neutralisation reaction with a strong base. So we can forget the counter ion that comes with OH minus, that's the uh, conjugate acid which is unrea unreactive, so we, we can ignore it. Okay? So when we start the titration at this point, all we have in solution is HA. We have not yet added anything else. Okay, so this is HA only. So any calculation is just the calculation of a weak acid. Okay, so if you see any acid here, for this point, the first thing you need to write out is the dissociation. That's the dissociation constant for that. Okay, so I'll put HA only. So we've got HA the only reaction that's going on, I'll leave the states out to save space, is the reaction of HA with water. It's a weak acid, so a reversible reaction. It's forming the conjugate base in a small amount, plus H3O plus. And we have a Ka value, which is equal to the concentration of A minus times the concentration of H3O plus, and it's over HA. And as I've just said, this is the only thing in solution. So there's nothing to interfere with the reaction, this reaction, and so the concentration of A minus and H3O plus are the same, okay, on that basis. And so this simplifies to the concentration of H3O plus squared divided by the concentration of HA. And we can now uh, rearrange this equation so that the subject is H3O plus and not Ka. So if we rearrange that, we get H3O plus is equal to the square root of uh, Ka times the concentration of HA. Okay? So we can then work out and pH is equal to minus the log of H3O plus. So in that first step we can easily calculate the pH at the beginning of the titration provided we know Ka and the concentration of acid. And generally that's what you're given uh, at the beginning of the titration is the concentration. Okay? Now we're going to assume that the concentration of acid is equal to the concentration of base. So the equivalence point which is in the middle of this uh, uh, steep curve is at 20 mils, which means I started with 20 mils of acid and I've added 20 mils of base because we've got equal concentrations. What we've got to think about is what's happened between uh, the start point and the equivalence point. So the first thing is to define the equivalence point. And what we mean by that is if we have a known number of moles of HA in solution, when we get to the equivalence point, we've added exactly that number of moles of base. Okay, so we've exactly neutralized 
the original weak acid. So we can work out, if we know the concentration of HA and its volume, we can work out the number of moles in there, and so we'll know exactly how many moles to get to this point here. In other words, it's the same number of moles of acid. You actually add exactly that number of moles of OH minus. And that takes us to the equivalence point by definition. So, uh, mole equivalent of base has been added to H. So in other words, if I was to do a little dot here, I'm starting with HA here, and by the time I've got there, I've got A minus only, which means in between there and there, I've got a mixture of HA and A minus, varying amounts. Yeah? So as I go from here to here, my amount of HA and the concentration of HA is going down, and the amount of A minus is going up because it's being, uh, HA is being neutralized to form A minus, so that amount's going up, and so the concentration of that's going up. So we're getting mixtures that are varying as we go across, depending on which way side of it we're looking at. Okay? What should come into your mind the moment you see this? It's a buffer, okay? So this is the buffer zone, okay? Now, if you cast your mind back to the buffer zone calculation, or the buffer calculations, okay, so this is a buffer, so I'm going to do something like that here about buffers. Okay, so this is buffer. Remember I talked about a buffer zone? Now, there's a very simple calculation for buffers. Remember, we've got this Ka here, so we can go back to that, okay? So Ka is equal to HA times, sorry, HA, sorry, A minus, A minus times H3O plus over HA. Now, because we're in the buffer zone now, we can't make the assumption we made here where the two... Uh, products of this reaction are the same concentration. We've actually had a, a second reaction going on, the neutralization reaction, which has altered them. So we have to leave it like this. What we want is H3O plus, this is the subject of the equation, because this is all about a pH of a titration curve. So this always needs to be over as the subject of the equation, so let's rearrange this so that the concentration of H3O plus is there, and we get Ka times HA over A minus. Now we want to make things simple because we've got to look at points on this curve where we can plot the pH and we want to keep it simple. The simplest thing is when these two concentrations are the same. This is when we have our most efficient buffer. Remember that? The most effective buffer is the one that can deal equally with uh, acid addition and base addition. And that's when these two concentrations are equal. Okay? Now, in terms of our plot here, these two will be equal at halfway to the equivalence point. Because you've half neutralized the acid and turned it into the conjugate base. So by definition, halfway between the uh, equivalence point and the starting point, so if we look at our value here, which is at the equivalence point, this is our starting point, this point here is halfway to equivalence. Okay? If we're at halfway to equivalence, so if I zoom in, at halfway to equivalence, the concentration of HA is equal to the concentration of A minus. Because I've literally, I'll say it again, I've literally taken away half of my acid and turned it into the conjugate base. Okay, so the two concentrations will be the same. 
So if these two are the same, they basically cancel out. And so H3O plus is equal to uh, Ka. So the pH is equal to the pKa. Because I'm done, it's just taking minus the log of both of them. So if we know what the pKa of the acid is, we know what the pH is at this point here. Okay? So if I put that there, So you like to have it quoted to you as the PKA. All you will be given KA. And so you can calculate it. Okay. Rather than what you will be given, you can calculate it. So, so far then we can plot this point here and this point there halfway to equivalence. Now we move on to the heavy duty bits. Okay. So the next thing we need to look at is the pH at the equivalence point. There. Okay. So I'm going to put an arrow over here and do all our calculation over here. Now what we is really important is you need to think about what's in solution. Okay? What you've done is you've taken your weak acid and you've converted it completely to its conjugate base. And that's the active thing in solution now. Okay? So what we need to do to calculate the pH here is to work out the concentration of that conjugate base in solution. Once we can do that, we can use the Ka value, and then we can work out, or the Kb value, Ka, and we can work out the concentration of OH minus, then the POH, then the pH. Okay? That sounds like it might be a difficult thing to do. In fact, it's very straightforward. Because if we know the number of moles of HA that we start with, and we can work that out very easily using n equals c times v, then that number of moles of HA is the number of moles of A minus that we get at equivalence. Yeah? What's changed, though, when you go from there to there? So the number of moles of that doesn't change. It becomes that. So we know that number of moles, but something else has changed. We need the concentration of A minus. What's changed? number of moles hasn't, but something has. The volume, because you're adding two things together. You've added the base to it, so the volume of solution is actually getting greater. So HA has become A minus, but your volume is actually, in this case, double. Okay. The first thing, then, is we need to know the number of moles of HA. Okay. And that's equal to the concentration of HA times the volume of HA. Okay. So we can calculate that. So that's the first thing. Calculate the number of moles of the weak acid. So we know what the number of moles of A minuses at equivalence there. So we've increased the volume of the solution. Okay. 
So we've got V total. Okay? And so now we know the total volume. We know the number of moles of A minus, which is the number of moles of HA that we started with. Okay? So we can now calculate the concentration of A minus at equivalence. That doesn't really help much because those aren't the original things that you have to think. So what I can do is put all of these into there. Okay. So Na uh, minus is NHA, which is CHA times VHA. Okay. So that's all the values that you measure or are given. So that is put into that. Okay. Now, that's the first step. So <laughs> this is it's not nice, is it? We've now got the concentration of conjugate base. So now we can work out the pH of the solution. So we've gone all this just to get to that. Okay. Now, what do I need to do? If I'm going to try and work out a pH from that, what is it I need to do? What do we always do at the beginning of a calculation? An equation for it. Okay. So, the only reaction that's going on, because that's the only thing that's reacting with water to cause a pH change, is A minus AQ plus H2O. I wasn't actually going to put all these in, so it's so that space, but I'll... It gives HA plus OH minus AQ. This is the only reaction that's going on at equivalence, and it's that that's changing the pH away from 7. So the pH is not 7, it's actually releasing OH minus, which means the concentration of OH minus is now going to be greater than the OH of H, the concentration of H plus, so the pH will be higher than 7. That's what you're expecting. Okay? Now this is for a base. So we're talking about a Kb here is equal to the concentration of OH minus times uh, HA divided by the concentration of A minus. And again... I'll say it, just what I've just said before. This is the only reaction now going on in solution, because it's an equivalence. Okay, at this at the equivalence point, this is the only species that's reactive in solution, and this is the only reaction that's going on. So that and that concentration are the same. We're almost there. Okay. Now we have a problem, Houston. What is the problem we have? We've got this. We can work this out. Okay, because we know uh, we could work out here. This is the thing we're going for. What about this? Are we given this? No, we aren't. But we can get it. How do we get it? Yes. Okay. So, remember, Ka times Kb equals Kw. I actually want Ka. Okay? So, Ka is equal to... Uh, sorry, we, we've got Kb, which is equal to Kw divided by Ka. What we can now do is substitute that here. Okay, but we'll do it when we get to the end because 
If we rearrange this, we want OH minus as our uh, subject, because that's the thing we can use to get our pH. Okay? So that's equal to the square root of KB times uh, A minus. Okay? And that's equal to, sorry, not putting it there, we should put it here. This is equal to the square root of KW times A minus over KA. We've calculated this here. This we're given, and this we know. So we can calculate the concentration of our H minus. Almost there. <laughs> Almost there. Just, just a couple of steps. Okay. So we know now, I'm running out of board. So if I put it over here, POH is equal to minus the log of OH minus. And so our pH is then equal to 14 minus P of H. Now that is the longest calculation I suspect you have to do for any achievement standard, not just this one. Okay? And I put it to you, this is actually quite straightforward. There is one possible banana skip that will make this even harder. Is this like the third banana skip in there? This came up last year. This calculation came up last year. Okay. So in fact, just thinking about that, okay, if we look at this, okay, can I just say, if we look at it in a, a different way, rather than going through all of this, we could actually write that slightly differently. Okay, so let's have a look at this bit here, and I'm going to put it over here, because I'm running out of space. Okay, so I'm going to write it out again. <laughs> The concentration of A minus is equal to C H A times V H A divided by V H A plus V O H minus. That's what that is. It looks incredibly complicated. In fact, it's not. Because if I rewrite that as CHA... Is it exactly the same thing? Times VHA divided by VHA plus VOH minus... This is the original concentration of HA times the original volume divided by total. So what's this? What equation is that? Oh, it's the dilution thing. It's the dilution thing. <laughs> so all you need, all of this, is just to show you how it works. But in fact, if you can just remember it, what you do is you take your original acid and apply a dilution effect <laughs> here. So you can jump past everything. So that was unnecessary. <laughs> that was all unnecessary, but I think it was necessary to explain it. But I need to explain everything to you to show you where all these things are coming from. You need to know that that is being converted entirely to that. But we can do that one again. But this is, yeah. So what I would suggest is this is the thing you should be using. Okay? So the concentration... <laughs> Easy stuff for you, let's. Okay? So if you can remember that, that's fine. It saves that extra step. It's just the, di the concentration of the conjugate base at equivalence is the diluted form of the uh, weak acid you started with. But if I had to say that, and I've done this in the years past, people just look at you and say, why? 
I just don't understand it. But having worked through it step by step, hopefully you understood the steps, because they're quite straightforward. It's just that you don't need to do that. This is what you need to use for your calculation. That's to get you to understand it. That's what you need to do. And we'll do some calculations involving one of these in a short while. Okay. Yes. So all of this here, so all of this here, which I'll highlight in red, okay, you can just do here, in this bit. Okay? But I've taken you through all the steps that lead to that. Now, as I said, there is a potential banana skin. I've made an assumption here to simplify things. What's the assumption that simplified everything? AB. What happens if this is not the same? That and that are different. It's actually straightforward. It's nothing to worry about. The only problem is that when you're working out the concentration, do you need the concentrations of anything other than the original thing? And the answer is no. What you need is the volume that's been added at the equivalence point. So how much water is going in from the base? That's all you need. And how do you work that out? It's actually straightforward. Really it is. Okay? What we want to find out is this bit. This is going to confuse things even more. What if concentration of HK does not equal concentration of OH minus? It is straightforward, but you need to sort of think this through carefully. What do we say here at equivalence? What does it mean? What does equivalence mean? What does it say it meant? You've added equal amounts of what to what? Acid to base. So N of OH minus equals N of HA. Because our original, this is our original, you really do need to listen to this, okay? This is, this is our original neutralization reaction. And at equivalence, what you've done is you've taken n moles of that and you've exactly added n moles of OH. Okay? So at equivalence, by definition, okay, n of HA is equal to n of OH minus. What we need to calculate this thing here, is the volume of base that we've added. We don't need the concentration because it doesn't come into this. Okay? It's the volume of base. N of HA is equal to C of HA times V of HA. Yeah? Because N equals CV, doesn't it? So N of OH minus is equal to C of OH minus times V of OH minus. What we want is the volume of OH minus. So the volume of OH minus, if we rearrange this, is equal to the concentration of HA, sorry, sorry the volume of HA, Okay. If the two concentrations were equal, that's all we'd need to write. However, they're not, so it's times the volume of HA divided by the volume of strong base that you've added. So in other words, it's the concentration times the ratio of acid to base. That's the simple way of remembering it. N of one at equivalent to equal to N of the other. C times V equals C times V, and then just rearrange it. So you would use that value here instead of just putting the concentration of in there. Okay. No, so you use that value here in the total concentration, uh, total volume.
Okay, next lesson, what we'll do is we will put some numbers to this and work through. Then we'll go on to the other time.